Now we're going to go back and modify our spline so that we get some more uh, attractive looking curves to our profile. When I had you create the spline originally, I asked that you set your initial and drag types to corner. And what that does go down to the vertex level again, is that each one of these vertices are considered a, a corner vertex. Now a corner vertex draws straight lines, but there are other kind of vertices that you have available to you. A uh, way to figure out what you have is to click and then right click, and it will show you right here the uh, different vertices vertex types that you have. Um, smooth gives you a curve. Um, bezier gives you a bezier spline. When you have a spline like this, you can click on the, uh, the handles and you need to go to select and move. and adjust the positioning of the handles. In this case here, I think I'm going to put it back to uh, a corner. And, um, and then adjust this one here to be a Bezier corner. So when it's set to a Bezier corner, you can independently, now I'm going to click on this uh, plane here first, uh, so that when I click on my handles, I'll be able to adjust them one at a time, um, or adjust them in, in either X and Y direction. Um, setting to Bezier corner separates uh, a Bezier vertex into two tangents, which allows you to adjust them independently. So let's adjust this one to look something like this. And we'll adjust the other one to give us a curve like that. And you can see that there is a difference in both direction and also um, length of those uh, handles. So let's get something that looks uh, approximately like this. And then well, let's play around with that a little bit more. Let's move the vertex over a bit. I'm going to move it down so it's more or less straight. And uh, give ourselves a curve that looks more like that. Okay, so you need to play around with these a little bit, and uh, we're going to go all the way up to the top to do some more refined work here. Let's try uh, smooth again here, uh, then maybe position this, um, that's maybe sticking out a little bit too far, so let's put it roughly there. Now let's try smooth again here. Uh, probably not. Let's try the uh, Bezier corner again. And uh, give ourselves something that looks like that. And a curve that looks like this. We could probably get rid of that vertex. So let's try that. Let's delete it. Gives us a good curve, really, without it. So we can do the job plus vertices. It's, it's just better. So there we go. I think um, that looks pretty good. So we're going to stick with that for now.
So let's make sure that our profile is ready to be revolved. What I'd like to do is make sure that uh, the top and bottom starting points are roughly right down the center of my front viewport. So what I'll need to do is uh, remove my plane here. So we're going to hide it. And uh, again, that uh, color of that profile there is not really very evident. So I'm going to zoom in here. And we can see that both top and bottom are not really in a good place here. So let's go uh, zoom in to the bottom and position it. so that the starting point is roughly at zero, zero here. And we could see here that there's still a little bit of a defect there to the bottom, and it's good if we can correct that. All right. And let's go to the top now and make sure that this point here is also right on that line there okay the next thing we'll do is let's get this ready to be the proper size so what we'll do now go to the create panel go to the helper objects and get a tool called tape and let's go ahead and set our snaps to vertices so that it will snap to the vertex at the bottom and top so what that tape tool does is it tells us what the length of the profile that we created originally is. So in order to get our length to change from 127 approximately to 240, which is the um, height of our uh, colonnade, uh, which is approximately uh, 8 feet once again, we're going to now take our spline and scale it. And we're going to use the scale type in. So we right click on the scale tool. And here we'll type in the percentage, which calculated 240 divided by 127 came out to approximately 189%. Now when I create a scale like that, it scales at about this point here, which is the pivot point of our spline. So what I'd like to do, let's move the pivot point of the spline so that it is placed on that vertex. Go to the Move tool and click until it is placed on the vertex. And now we can get out of Effect Pivot Only and then move our entire shape by right-clicking on the X, Y, and Z spinners. So it zeroes out all those values. Now we're ready to revolve our object about its center axis. Let's go to the four viewport configuration and select Zoom extends in all viewports. Go ahead and select the line and uh, go to the modify panel, modifier list. Going to add a modifier. The modifier is actually called lathe. This now lathes the object around 
that center axis. A couple things that we should do here. One is to weld the core. Make sure that uh, center points there are good. Um, adjust the number of seg segments. Number of segments, I usually try to stick to multiples of four. Uh, 16 is, is not enough. You can see that uh, that's uh, highly uh, segmented. So let's, uh, let's try something like 24, see what we get here. That's a little bit better, um, but uh, probably again, let's uh, use something just a little bit higher. Let's try 30. So here's our column. We save that column. Go ahead and save it in your startup files. And just give it the name Doric. 